Here we go. All right. That's the fun part right here. Mm. Did you imagine doing that without a staff? Oh, no. We need this staff to survive. Because they can read us. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. You know, they can kind of just read our mind. And couldn't imagine being in the heat of battle with surgery without my right hand man, Paul. How are we doing now, Paul? We good? Can you give it a little bit more? <laughs> like, he ain't saying a word. But you, but you, but know, you know. You know, right? Yeah, you're right. Trying to do it without Jordan and her fanny packs. Huh? Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. <laughs> 20 years we've had an under. I mean, yeah. it's okay. I know, I know. We could never repay them. You remember yeah. when I, it was just me and you? <laughs> that was it. Your yeah. receptionist? Was I good? You was great. Oh, man. But you just, it's, I couldn't afford to pay a receptionist that salary. So, you know, you was overqualified, so I had to let you go. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, my boy. Two Chow Chows are at Critter Fixer to help their eyes get back on the prize. Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm fine. Can we be friends? What we got going today? I already know they have entropian. Oh, man. So we need to get them up here so we can evaluate them. Come here, baby. I'm here today with Bentley and Ty. They are both show chows. Bentley is very good at showing. He likes other people, and he does well in the ring. Ty is a little more skittish in the ring, so it's been a little more of a challenge to get his championship. I was actually raised with chows, and once you've had a chow, you don't want any other kind of dog. So he's the grand champion. He is the grand champion. Yeah. Bentley? Bentley. Yes. Look at him. Look at nice little mane. Yeah. He's like a lion. <laughs> Okay, definitely a top one that's rolling in. No question about that. We don't see a lot of chow chows now, and they're in because they're suspected of having entropion. And it's pretty common in dogs that have a lot of extra skin on their face. Basically, your top and bottom eyelid, rather than it closing, and they roll under. And when they roll under, they irritate the eye a lot, and they can cause them to have some scarring on there. Looking at that right eye, we're going to have to remove some tissue, but possibly the left eye as well. I know more once the hair is shaved. Okay. We'll switch up. That's some beautiful babies. Thank you. You are beautiful. Ty, been shown much? He has been shown much, but he hates it. Oh, he doesn't like it? He, he doesn't like that's it. That's too much for you. I don't blame you, man. <laughs> Both same right arm. Not as bad. It's not as severe as in Bentley, more or less in that one eye. So I can take maybe a little bit off the top and the bottom there, open up some. Then we'll talk about getting them in and getting surgery done for them, okay? okay? I can definitely tell we're going to have to remove some extra skin from those top lids. It's almost like if, you know, you're walking around all day and your eyes are kind of half open. That's kind of where they are now. So we're going to feel better after surgery because they'll be able to see better. And then we can eliminate ever having any issues as far as corneal abrasion or anything to the eyes. I'm not an artist, so it's probably not going to look anything like an eye. Dr. Ferguson, artistic ability. I hope you got a good imagination. <laughs> So eyes there, we actually have to remove some tissue from here. Uh -huh. And if we have to do top and bottom, we do we remove that tissue and then we pull them together and we put stitches in here. It's normally a one-day procedure. Okay. And we can get you scheduled and get it taken care of for you. Sounds good. Okay. Well, mommy's gonna take you home, okay? But y'all gonna have to come back. They like they really don't care, do they? They're still like, <laughs> we're done. We're done. You're done. You see you in a minute, my buddy Bentley. I haven't done a, an entropian surgery, but I know it's pretty common in chows, and I know that it fixes the problem. My only concern is anesthesia, but Dr. Ferguson came highly recommended. Yeah, ready to go, huh? Keep chilling. Mm -hmm. Milo, it's okay, buddy. Milo the Golden Doodle lands at the vet after one too many jumps for joy. What's up? Dr. Hardis, what's happening? My man, how you been? Pretty good, how you been? You look like you don't grow an inch. <laughs> you doing all right? Yes, sir. What's going on with this dog? I had just came home, and he jumped and landed on Jalen's arm, and he hurt his front left leg. Boy. I heard the Milo whine probably three or four times this morning, and he was constantly limping, so I knew right away I needed to bring him in. He's more of my dog, but he's a family <laughs> dog also. We'll play, I sit with him while he eats. We just have a strong bond together. So his arm pulled to the side with all of Milo's weight. All right, we're going to walk him down the hall. Let's see what we got. Come on, Milo. Oftentimes, we have to watch our clients walk because they don't walk in and say, hey, doc, I'm hurting right here and right here. So by seeing how he's walking, I'm able to see exactly where he's distributing his weight and survey exactly where the pain is. Let's go see how just come on. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. He's keeping his weight off that left side. When he put the pressure down, the head comes up. Uh -huh. You want to keep weight off because it keeps the pain off. And then on a the good leg, then he can just walk normal. Makes sense, right? Yes, sir. Let's see if we can palpate this leg and see where this injury might be. You always start at the bottom and work yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be in the shoulder. I'm sorry, my love. You always want to make sure you're checking there's no bone fractures. So I'm going to shoot an x-ray, and then we'll look at it together. Yes, sir. 
Oftentimes, these big, fractious dogs that love to run around, they can jump and break a bone pretty easily. And I'm hoping there's not a fracture, because these dogs don't stay still. It's very hard to kennel them. It takes a long time for the bones to heal. This is the shoulder. And this is the actual bone in the shoulder that it comes up to the clavicle. Yes, the good news is there's no breaks. There's no problem there, right? This dog, I'm pretty sure it just got a hurt tendon. Man, I'm glad you found it quick, because I was worried. I need you to say this word. Milo has biceps. Biceps. Tenosynovitis. Tenosynovitis. <laughs> you know, it took me like four years of vet school before I could say that. <laughs> biceps, tenosynovitis. And if you play Scrabble, that definitely gives you about 50 points. It's really just the bicep tendon that goes right over the shoulder into the groove. It's got really inflamed. And it really is painful, but it's better than having a broken bone by a mile. That's the tendon. You see how it moves? Yeah. So you just diagnosed. You don't even need me. <laughs> So typically, I put a cortisone shot in, and then we're gonna do six laser treatments. Be good as new. Yes, sir. Now, that's the easy part. The hard part is what you gotta do for me. What? Keep him from running. Got it? Yes, sir. So he's gonna have to be on a leash, because them squirrel. No Texas squirrels. You want a two-week squirrel hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> laser therapy is amazing. It reduces the inflammation, and also brings up the oxygenated blood cells so that it can heal a lot faster. Don't you look handsome. So I feel like if the owners can keep my love from running around and jumping on things, we're gonna have a very good outcome. Yeah, that feels good, huh? Man, that's pretty cool. Dr. Hodges said he'll have a full recovery. We just gotta keep him from running, though. So he can't chase any squirrels or anything, so, you know, that'll be tough. I'm gonna be there for my buddy. Good to see you, boss. Thank you. Hey, little buddy, what's up? You ready here? Oh, yeah. This came in for you today. We got full syringes. How many in there? We got 50 of them. What am I going to do with 50 balls ring? When things like this happen, we may have a small shipment that turn into a larger shipment than we anticipated. Some reason the veterinary police comes through and trying to figure out <laughs> what happened, why it happened. <laughs> what does it come from? Andrea told me that Dr. Ferguson uses them in every surgery. Paul, oh, how many times have I used the balls ring? Maybe like twice. These are as huge as turkey bass. We can't aspirate a puppet with these. I asked for one, and there's a box that appeared with 50. You asked like, for them. I, I didn't ask for them. So why you got 50? Because it was all they had in stock, and I oh. wanted you to See, have what? them if you needed I them. I got it, but 50? But I was perfectly again. fine in my non-bulb world. And you would have been fine, too, if you had to just act like you didn't see them. But no. <laughs> I can't use these, man. They don't even have them. the quantity on the side. <laughs> I'm out. I'm I give up. I tell you what. Mm -hmm. I take half, you take half. No, I'll take two and you take 48. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, what? No, that's too close. All right. <laughs> no. Next up is an unexpected visit from an expectant French bulldog. What's up, y'all? Hello, doctor. How y'all? Good. So we had to stay in schedule for Friday, huh? We were scheduled for Friday. Let's see what we got. Today we brought in Midnight because we are trying to see if she was ready for her C-section. She's scheduled for Friday, but we just noticed she was really uncomfortable. Very restless. So I wanted to bring her in just to get her checked to see if everything was okay, because I didn't want to have an emergency situation. So what kind of stuff we been doing? Panting, digging, and her temp was 98.7. All right, so what I'm doing is just kind of checking. Service is starting to open. Get some mucus plug. We ain't gonna take no chances. Just shoot a picture to make sure everybody lined up the way they're supposed to be. All right. How many puppies do you think McNight has? Either five or six. Six? Good gracious. We'll see. I'll be back, y'all. And it feels like Midnight's mucus plug has come out, but I'm not 100% sure that these puppies are ready to come out. So I'm gonna shoot an x-ray because I just want to make sure that these pups are the adequate size and they're ready to be delivered. You can actually see the bodies there. I'm gonna let them reassess that count. Come on over here. I see five. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. His head goes that way, mm -hmm. and then that one goes that way. But then there's a skeleton that goes right there. To that one? Oh. We got four puppies. <laughs> no, there's four. <laughs> That's why you're the doctor, not me. This one is starting to come to the pelvis. The plug is definitely open. Yeah, I think we might be a little distressed, so. Oh, they are? I think they definitely need to come out. That doesn't settle well in your stomach. Yeah, I think mean, you probably got in some trouble tonight. It was a good thing the owner brought Midnight in because I see one puppy stuck in the pelvis, so these puppies are probably distressed. And if we don't get these puppies out quick, it's a good possibility these puppies could die. 
When you wake up, you're going to have some babies. We'll go ahead and get everything ready. All right, CC, let's get a stethoscope and stuff on here. OK. Top to Paul. Ready to move her. All right. How y'all looking in here? We got towels in that towel warmer, incubators warm. Let's go. Timing is everything when you're trying to do this. We got to get in and get out before these puppies become compromised. Yes, sir. Let's go to work. How we doing, Paul? We're doing good. So we're going to expose the uterus here. All right. So this is a uterus full of babies. This is one that's got a problem. What you see, Doc? He got meconium all on him. Uh-oh. He definitely was in the stress. Come on, pup. When a pregnancy is stalled, the puppy can get stressed and release meconium, and the puppy can get trapped in the sack of his own poop and get suffocated. Yeah. Yeah, all right. This is one of the problems. Okay, I got it. Right. Hey, talk to me. Come on, pup. Come on. How that one doing, Jay? Not breathing yet, Doc. Sarah, grab tea. Since his first puppy is having trouble breathing, it's probable that the rest of these puppies are going to have a problem breathing, so I need all hands on deck. Talk to me. Hey, Cece, get ready to grab a puppy. The first one good? Hey, talk to me. <laughs> yes, sir. I have some troublemaker. How we doing? That one looks pretty good. OK, Jordan, we got another one. All right, buddy, how we doing? It's our job to get these pups going. We want to take a towel and stimulate them. We have syringes that we use to try to pull the fluid from their lungs so they can start breathing on their own. Want me to take one of these? Yep, take this one right here. Your baby making noise yet? No. We like to hear crying. The clock is definitely ticking. They don't breathe and they can't vocalize. So once they vocalize, then I know they're doing good then. T, this third one, they're going to be distressed. He got meconium on and everything. Come on, come on. This is the last one? Yes. This one is pretty strong. That third one was the worst. Talk to me a little bit. You got some? No crying yet. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. She's looking great. Yeah. Three girls, one boy. Yeah, everybody's talking now, huh? Look like y'all doing something right out there. Everybody percolate. <laughs> If we had not made that call with the C-section, it's a good chance that mom and those puppies surely would have died. But today is a good day. Anytime you deliver some cute, cuddly puppies, it's a good day. Good job. Appreciate the boss. Teamwork made the dream work. Yes, sir. Hi, pretty girl. Having the faith and the respect in Dr. Hodges and Dr. Ferguson, it, it really makes you more at ease, knowing that they're in good hands always. I don't think I've ever seen a person put puppies in there that good. Good job. As soon as we get them home, first thing that happens is we put Midnight in her comfortable spot. The puppies go in the incubator. I set the temperature before we left the house, just in case. I'm very ready for them to come home. Yeah. See y'all later. All right, Doc. All right. You ready to go back to mommy? What we got today, boss? Snoop. Snoop is one of my favorite dogs. Yeah. Like, Snoop been coming here forever. Shoot, I, I, I've known him all the time I've been here. Let's go check on Snoop. Snoop! Hey, Snoopy, what's up, man? My man. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's going on? So what's been going on with Snoop? He had a bit of a cough, and as you can see, he's got his growth, growth back. back again. That's pretty big there, Snoop. Uh, we brought Snoopy in today, and we've been bringing him here to Critter Fixer ever since he was born. He's a real gentle spirit, and he's very loving. He's just been a real blessing in our life. He's had a growth on his chest two times, and Dr. Hodges has removed it, so we wanted to see if he would be able to do that for him again. 14 years old, he was still, like, wagging tail and everything. How fast would you say it's grown? It seems like it takes about a year to grow to that size. I want to go look in his chest, and we'll see what we got. I'll be right back, guys. OK, thank you. No problem. All right, you big fella. Snoopy, he's really having a hard time breathing, worried about his heart, and uh, I just don't know if it's cancerous or benign. It's OK, Snoopy dog. Definitely not a, a great sign when a tumor comes back in the same spot, so I want to check the tumors in the chest, and if I can, I'll get it off. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure we keep Snoopy around. That don't look great. Bad, huh? Yeah, so much stuff going on over here. Mm -hmm. That tumor is that's causing some havoc there. we got some fluid in our chest. So like we're starting to get some heart disease. Oh. Can you grab some blood, just a pre-op? Yes, sir. Snoop definitely is not the, the best surgical candidate in the world. Imagine doing surgery on a 95-year-old person. Risky because he has to process the anesthesia. But if the liver and kidney are OK, we're going to do some surgeries. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to prolong his life, as long as he's not suffering. As you can see, when I walked in the room, Snoop still was wagging that tail. Hey, Snoop. I actually got his blood. 
Hey, hey. His blood work a little bit, man. Okay. Hey, man, it looks good. In that chest, though, he is starting to get a little bit of fluid from the heart. We can do some medicine there. But as far as liver and kidney and anesthesia, we are right. definitely risk of doing 14 and a half, but looking at the x-rays and the way it's growing there, I don't know how much of a choice we have of not doing it. We definitely want to do it. We'll give it a shot, see if we can get it out of there. If he wasn't still enjoying life, we would probably have to let him go. But if it's pain that can be relieved, we do the best we can for him. I trust Dr. Hodges, so I'm praying for the best. I just, I just said, just stay close. Okay, stay close. All right. Mm -hmm. 14 and a half years old. Right. Ooh. Okay, big fella. Hopefully, we can make Snoopy feel a little bit better. I mean, it's definitely an anesthetic risk. Shit, my head's starting to get heavy, huh? Go on down, bud. We're going to try to be quick and pay really, really close attention to Snoopy. <gasps> get Snoopy in surgery now as fast as we can. <sighs> Nervous. I am not going to be the reason Snoopy ain't on this earth. Doing okay? My heart rate's fine. Ready to start? Yes, sir. I'm gonna get straight to it. Then we're gonna be fast. She definitely don't want to keep him down long. When you remove a tuber, sometimes it can be long like a marathon. But I really need this to be like a 100-yard dash. You got a 14-and-a-half-year-old dog. We worry about breathing. Snoopy also has a heart problem. So I really need Snoopy to get on this table and off as fast as I can. Not only with anesthesia does their heart rate drop, you also have risk with dropping down their temperature. How we doing, boss? She's doing good. Yeah, try to undermine this tumor. That's a pretty big tumor. Oh, my. Come on, Snoop. Hang in there, buddy. All right. We got this tumor out of there. What is it? Appears to be a lot of pomum. Usually, lipomas are just really fat or adipose tissue, so you can kind of see a white, pale-looking fat. But luckily, lipomas can be benign when they don't have a large blood supply. Get my buddy off the table here. How we doing, Paul? His body temperature is starting to drop. It's not good. Last thing we want Snoop's temps to drop. All right, hang in there, Snoop. I'm trying to close this. Wake him up. On it, Doc. All right, old friend. I guess Snoopy sold up, but I mean, it's only half the battle. I mean, I'm still concerned because he has to wake up from anesthesia. Hey, Snoop. Hey. So general anesthesia is not just a relaxed sleep. There's a lot going on. If your respiratory rate is depressed, your heart is not pumping as well, so you get a lower blood pressure. And we're dealing with a 14 and a half year old heart. It has to work harder to pump blood around the body. So this is really touch and go with Snoopy. Let's go ahead and get him some warm towels. He's still not quite regulating the heat. I'm gonna take him a minute to come up. Yeah, so his heartbeat is good, but his oxygen saturation is low. And we just aren't there. You got an old dog that you've been friends with and you love this family, and you've been watching for a long time. And when he's not waking up, I mean, it's tough. Hey, wake up, old friend. I'm just thinking about all the years with this dog, you know? I mean, this is part of the family, and, uh, you know, you can't help but get emotional because, you know, if you care, and I care. I ain't been doing this as long as I have, you know? You get attached to him. Wake up, buddy. There you go. Yeah, he coming up. Definitely a good son. I finally can excel. Scared me. The last thing I wanted to do was... He's the one that caused them not to be here. We spent 14 and a half years with a dog and see him grow up. And I just wasn't ready to let him go. And I'm um, sure his owner's not ready to let him go. You take wins when you can, and fortune is a win. I'm glad I was able to, to make him better. Just a good dog. All right, buddy. You go back to being your same old snooping. Mr. Costello, how are you? Uh, hold my breath. Well, you can stop holding it. All right. We did good, man. It just took a while to wake up. We just weren't getting a lot of saturated oxygen. But uh, the surgery went fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm just grateful for every day. So he's going to hang out for, with me for the weekend. But you're welcome to come visit. That sounds perfect. Hey, thanks a lot. And I, I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Bye bye. I know it. I love these little things. <laughs> Ready? Back to your hotel for a minute. Show Chow's Ty and Bentley are ready for some shut eye during their entropion repair. I don't did my surgery for the day. I'm up next. You up next? Tag him in. You sound like you're trying to go somewhere. Trying? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what time lunch traditionally starts? By 12. I mean, I'm a minute late. <laughs> I got two dogs. You can take one, I'll take one. Nah, that don't sound like a plan. What time is it? 12.02. I'm two minutes late to lunch. <laughs> it's like a bear. We're preparing here to do surgery on two child childs, Bentley and Ty, and they have uh, entropion, which basically eyelids are kind of rolling in because they have so much extra skin around those eyes. I've done a lot of entropion surgeries on dogs, but a little bit of added pressure this time because they're show dogs, so I have to make sure that they look great when they get back in that show ring. We have Ty up first. Right, let's see what we got to take away here. Just the right eye, right, Doc? Yep, we're just doing the bottom. Just... How do you determine how much to take off? You just... So what I do initially is get a reference on how much you want to take. So better to be conservative, huh? Because we don't want to turn an entropy on to an ectropy on. One thing we don't want to do is take too much tissue. We can create another problem. It's ectropy on where the eyelids don't even close enough. What you want to do is remove a little bit of tissue at a time till you feel good about how much you have removed. Yep, that looks pretty good there. Beautiful. That's the only one you're doing? That's the only one you're doing. We're going to wake this baby up and proceed to Bentley. I think Bentley is a little more severe. I think we're going to have to do some work on both eyes. I have no idea what I'm going to have to do. Bam! Did anybody else hear that? They probably are laying on the floor somewhere. Oh my gosh. What you see? Both sides are more good. Both right and left. Yes. So now that it has removed, it gives me a better visual. I can pinch a little bit to see how much I need to take off. I can tell that we're going to have to do both eyes on Bentley. Just trimming skin, trying to see how much I want to remove, cutting and just eyeballing it. Pet, eyeballing it. Do you have a joke book laying around? Yeah. Can you return it? Ooh, crack myself up. Right, we're starting on side number two. You got to be a little bit of everything around right, you. Dentist, anesthesiologist. Oh, well, that's true. Plastic surgeon today. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we got enough tissue removed now. I'm going to suture this back up. All right, Big Bentley. Good job, Doc. Everything went well. Bentley on Tropion was a little bit worse. I actually did both sides. And you can see those eyelids, they don't roll under. The rest of our life, we wanted to worry about eye irritation from eyelids or anything like that. Once that swelling and inflammation subside next few days, they're going to look beautiful. Right here. Mom's in here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, poor babies. I know, you can't get to me, Bentley. That kind of hurts. <laughs> oh, yeah, they take your shins out with those Yeah, cones. they can do a lot of damage with those, so be careful. Everything went well. They look real good. All right, all right thank, thank you, you so all. much. All right. I'm very excited to be taking them home. I'm looking forward to how much better it's going to be for them when they're able to see clearly. Next show is not until December, so I'm hoping that the hair will have grown back by then. Hopefully in two weeks, this will be just a blur. Want to go outside? Let's go. Whoa. Slow down. Slow down. All right, what's going on with him, man? He was running and came in contact with a car. That ain't good. Kind of got shadow breathing. It's a little rough. Oh, boy. Shoot me an x-ray right quick. Yes, sir. A chance left the yard, and the truck was coming one way, and he was coming the other. It's rough to see him there trying to breathe as he's family. We took him to a hospital. They decided that his injuries were more than what they could handle, and they suggested that we'd see Dr. Hodges today. Shooting. Give me two seconds. Man, that's crazy. Total lung is collapsed. The whole diaphragm is ruptured somewhere around here. It's bad, huh? It's bad, man. Come on in. The stomach is actually in the chest. Mm. So what do you do? You pull back the stomach? You can pull it back, suture it. But the problem is the diaphragm is ruptured. So once I open the abdomen, there's no more negative pressure. The lungs no longer inflate. So we breathe for the dog during that time. And that's the tricky part. And I can sit here, and I just took a breath. I didn't have to breathe because my diaphragm moves up and down. This dog has no diaphragm. So once I put him under anesthesia, what we call negative pressure where it's gone, it's gone. And hopefully, I'm able to suture up this diaphragm fast enough before it dies of asphyxiation. I mean, this is a high-risk, high-reward surgery. The outcome is either this dog is going to get remarkably better quick or it's going to die. I'll give you a 25% chance. part of the family right here, so. We're going to do whatever we have to do to keep him here as long as we can. We yeah. trust you. Hold on. <laughs> Chance was a rescue dog. He rescued us when we needed it. He's always around, even when I'm feeling down. So now it's our turn to return the favor for him. 
Thank you. You're gonna be on it. Thank okay. you. Let's go ahead and get him ready to go. You got this, dog. This is that, that one in a million case where you gotta have a little bit of luck for it to go well. I mean, and this dog's whole lung is collapsed. The diaphragm is missing. This is probably about as tough as it gets. This dog could definitely die during this procedure. All right, buddy. Let's do it. He's gonna be all right. This ventilator is what's gonna breathe for the dog while I repair this thing. When I make this incision, he ain't gonna be no more negative pressure. All right, here we go. Making my cut. A lot of bruising. Oh, goodness. Typically, I'm used to know where everything is. But in this case, the stomach and the liver has completely gone in, laying beside the lungs. This is a mess. How we doing? Yeah, we good, we good. So the stomach is now coming out of the diaphragm. You gonna make it the halfway? Yeah. We ain't nearly out of the woods, though. I'm trying to get the liver out of the chest. Every time I get close, the liver keeps getting sucked up. Oh, wow. Every time I move the liver and try to get it out of the thorax, as the lung would expand, it suck it back in. So it is tough. Come on, Ira. It's so hard because it's such a small space. All right. The liver and stomach are back where they belong. Now let's get this diaphragm shut. So you just did. I heard a lot of gurgling. Come on, dog. Hang in there. Get him out of the table. I'm trying, bro. Here's the hole. Let's sushi this thing up. We need a miracle. Hang in there. Got it. I got a seal. I can feel that diaphragm moving. Now it's pulling. I think we got him. It's the miracle we needed. Let's wake him up. Once I get those sutures in, I'm able to keep the stomach and a liver lobe out of the thorax and we'll get a diaphragm sewn up. You know, we're still not out of the woods, but. It definitely feels a whole lot better. Boy, it's a long day, boss. Yes, sir. So how we looking, man? We, we off the table. We got that diaphragm wall back. OK. I mean, we still not out of the woods, but we're going to put a prognosis 9 50, 50 So we got a shot. Thank you, Lord. So then Chance will definitely be staying here tonight at Hotel Hodges, and we'll cross our fingers. That's all we can ask for. Thankful, thankful, thankful. Hey, take in my special oxygen. Good it's a bright morning for Midnight the French Bulldog, who's back with her bundles of joy. What's up, girl? Hi, how are you? You all right? Yes, sir. These puppies look amazing. Let's take a peek. Thank you. It always smiles when they're puppies in the house. That's Brock. What's up, Brock? And these were puppies that I had to save via cesarean section. So it's always good to get a follow up and see how those puppies are doing. That's Sasha. Oh, Sasha, you can't get away. We'll check to make sure their belly buttons are where they're supposed to be. Your belly button is good. You looking for Audis, or basically, the, they don't have umbilical hernias or any kind of inguinal hernia. You always want to check for heart murmurs. Also, you want to, you're looking at the eyes, the ears. You know, you just want to make sure they're a happy, healthy puppy. There's some sharp teeth. Little fangs. <laughs> They look fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Hatches. Knowing that everybody is amazing, I am feeling super blessed to watch Midnight and the puppies mature and grow and come into their personality and learn how to play with other dogs and how to play with each other. It's very heartwarming. Come on, Midnight. Come on. They're putting that cape on my back. I feel like the Jane Brown. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Little baby. Mommy's little baby. Hello, hello. Hey. How are you? Hey. Look at you hanging out down there. Huh? <laughs> you doing okay today? They're not really. No. That's why you're here, huh? <laughs> this is Melissa Ann. Missy is the princess. She is quite bossy. She is telling me when she wants to go outside, when she wants to eat, when she wants to sit in my lap. But right now, she's so lethargic. So I just wanted to come and make sure there's nothing wrong with her. She's been up on her front paws, lifting her behind up. Okay. Her tummy hurts. Any um, vomiting, any diarrhea? No diarrhea, but okay. she throws up. Okay. So we didn't sleep last night. Okay. And we didn't sleep Sunday. You're both tired, huh? I am. Missy's not sleeping, which means the owner is not sleeping. So I definitely feel for her. All these symptoms are very serious, and I have to put this detective hat on so they can all get some rest. It's okay. She's not gonna leave you? I would never. Heart sounded good. How old is she now? Missy is eight. Okay. Are you hurting somewhere? 
Sometimes they can have pancreatitis. Ah. And they'll get in a prayer position because they're getting the pressure off the pancreas and it feels better. Oh, uh, because, yeah, she's been doing that a lot. Uh, so I want to run a couple tests here. OK. They have pancreatitis, they have to be hospitalized. Hopefully they're negative. I hope so, too. Yeah. I can't oh. sleep without her now. We might have get you a bed up here, huh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. I got you. All right, we're going to do what we can. Pancreatitis is an inflammation of the pancreas, and it can be something that's very severe. So there are a couple of tests that I want to run to either rule things in or rule things out. Good girl, Missy. Because we're eight years old, we're going to check the liver function, kidney function, to make sure they're good as well. Worst case scenario is that we are dealing with pancreatitis or some kind of cancer of the GI tract. Come on, let's go back to your mama. Look at you, poor baby. Poor thing. It's going to be okay. Hey, sweet girl. It's gonna be okay. So we ran a few tests here, okay? You don't have to be scared. Come on over here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we start here with our test, which is our CBC. And right now, it's normal. Uh, next group, liver function, kidney function. Well, we have diabetes. That's normal. Okay. And the next is our CPL test or the test we test for pancreatitis. It's a color indicator test. Okay. The test here has to be darker than the control or the same. Okay. And you see it's lighter. So that's a negative test. Yay, Missy. So we basically left with gastritis going on. That's probably why we're vomiting some, but it's probably hurting painful as well. Yeah. Gastritis is the inflammation of the stomach, and it causes a lot of gas, which also causes them to have a lot of discomfort. We're going to go on antibiotics that's specially formulated for the GI tract, some anti-inflammatories to help for pain, and this baby should be feeling good here in a few days. All right, Come so we're on. happy. Yay. So you don't have to stay, so you don't have to be nervous. No, we don't have to we, stay. Oh, I should be talking to you then. So we, we don't, don't have, have to stay, to stay. so we don't have to <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Missy does not have to stay all night. She does not have pancreatitis, so I can't wait for her to become her bossy little self again. I'm going to give her that first dose of medication, and we're going to lay down and take a nap, because we have not slept. <laughs> we ready to go home, aren't we, sugar nuggets? Did Dr. Hodges respond? He called me and I told him. Just a few seconds ago? Yeah. Okay. After a weekend of recovery for Snoopy the dog, Dr. Hodges rushes to the clinic as an emergency arises. When did he start signing Wheezy? This morning. Snoopy, he kind of crashed on us. He went into a labor breathing. It got very shallow. So we put him on oxygen. His temperature dropped. I hope for his sake and Dr. Hodges that he make it, because Dr. Hodges is very attached to this dog. He's going to be devastated. <sighs> hey, Hodges. Snoopy's family just got here. He ain't going, but he just, I think he's just, this is his heart. So I'll let you see him. Hey, Snoop. Someone here to see you. Hey, buddy. His saturated oxygen and everything. Oh, it's 6 to 8%. I could tell he was breathing a little harder. We need to make decisions. Not yet. No, let's, let's give him some time. I'm looking at Snoopy's saturation of oxygen, which basically means the heart beats and it puts blood around. And the body gets perfused with oxygen to make the brain go. You have enough oxygen to make the lungs go. But with his age and heart disease to everything he's gone through, their body just sometimes just isn't able to recover. So more so than the tumor, it's in heart disease. He's a 14-year-old dog. I don't know, Snoop. His heartbeat is getting weaker. Hey, go ahead and put a blanket in there. I mean, the way it's going, I want y'all to be with him. It's really tough to see Snoopy in this state, you know? You know, as a veterinarian, you got problems that you wish you could fix. And unfortunately, looking at Snoopy, I kind of realized that this is probably it. Y'all come on over here, because I think he's starting to take his last few. to let him go. Suffer him. Give him something. I don't want him to suffer. Thank you. I'm used to dogs coming out of my favor, but his body just kind of gave out on him. Yeah, you know, it's, I guess it's a part of life. I know you guys did a lot for him, so thank you. It's all good. He's special. This dog is like a lifelong friend. You know, I know it's not fair, but I got people in that room who are almost like family, and my job is to be strong for them.
I loved him. <laughs> I did. I loved him too. It's hard sometimes. Some of these pets, we saw them at birth. They're like your children. You saw them literally grow, go through their issues. And then you're right there with them when they take their last breath, you know? Mm. It gets tough. You also have to treat the owners with. You know, they have the emotional attachment. It's definitely not an easy thing, but it is a blessing that we had an opportunity to be a part of their life. All right, who we got next? Ah, oh, man. A petite puppy is in for having an unusual appetite. Hey, hey, how are you? How you doing? Who you got here? Yeah, Island Girl. What's going on with Island Girl? Man, I had a little out of cage, and then she swallowed a sock. I seen one, so then I turned around again. I seen her grab the one a little bit soft. Then she got two socks on. Oh my. She came from the Virgin Islands, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna call her Island Girl. Basically, this is my daughter dog, so I let her just play with her. The day she was grabbing the stuff off the sofa and stuff like that. And then I kind of seen, like, hey, did she just eat a sock? I just kind of figured she couldn't pass no socks. So, you know, I had to get her here as quick as I can, you know, to make sure she's all right. Did you see any vomit, diarrhea, anything? Uh, nah. She was still running around, right around. Playing, yeah. After she ate the two socks? Yeah. <laughs> she was looking for another one. Oh, my. <laughs> Give me one second, boss. All right. Anytime a dog possibly ate a foreign object, that is really, really bad. These objects can make intestines wrap on themselves, and they can just get physically stuck, and it can be fatal. He said, I don't want to lay down. Typically, one of the first things we'll do is uh, x-ray, because radiographs tells us where is this thing lodged and exactly what is in there. Uh-oh. No bueno. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. How you eat all them socks? Eh, yeah, boss. All of this. Sock. It's <laughs> sock. Yeah. My game plan, I'm going to go down with an endoscope, and I'm going to see if I can grab them almost like that claw game, mm -hmm. and just try to pull them out one by one. Appreciate it, man. I'm going to use my endoscope and hopefully be able to go down and retrieve it. If I can't, we're going to possibly have to go to surgery. You know what you did. She said it shouldn't have been in the floor. But when you cut the stomach, that opens up a whole other list of problems. You've got possible leakage and you worry about possible septicemia. So I'm really hoping to avoid going in with my surgery blade. He only ate socks, right? He ain't ate no toys. He finna find out. Yeah, you getting sleepy. Endoscopic has been uh, around for quite a bit in human medicine and not so long in veterinary medicine. It takes a learning curve. I'm operating in a space about this small inside the stomach, so I got to go up, down, look, and be able to retrieve it. But I'm thinking all those years of playing video games definitely help. All right, let's see what we got going on in here. We got food. Everywhere. Food. So she had food to go with them socks. So as we start going into the stomach, I noticed that this is a very hungry pup. It ate one sock, then it ate another sock, then it even ate a meal afterwards. This stomach is filled. But just like this puppy, I have to dig in. Wait, just a little bit more? I don't think that's food. It's a sock of crap, I saw one. All right, Paula, let's send in the claw. Yes, Ferguson missing all the claw game today. Come back a little bit. Let's bring it. Pull it. I don't see nothing. I got it, still. I still got it. One down, one to go, boss. How do you eat a whole sock? I have no clue. We see a lot of things inside of an animal's stomach, and usually they've chewed it up some. But this sock is coming out fully intact. I mean, she just ate the whole thing whole. So what are the odds she inhaled the other one? All right, we're back in the stomach. Let's see. Go in a little bit more. Oh, some chunks. She's swallowing food whole. She just eating up everything. What's that? Mm. Is that piece of her? That's a little purple sock, ain't it? Oh, that's yeah, what that purple is. Purple sock. Oh, wow. OK. It's a big sock. Oh, yeah, yeah, you on it. Ready? Yep. There we go. Woohoo! That's two. You think it's the third one? No, there? no, no. It was two of them. Do you want these? No, nah, yeah. <laughs> OK. Good to go, man. Dog, wake up. Tomorrow, it'll be like nothing happened. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I knew where to come. I've gotten this second sock out. And because I use the endoscope, I don't have to worry about any kind of leakage from my suture site. She'll be back to her old self tonight and be ready to play around on. But stay away from socks. Hey, you cannot eat this. No. Have <laughs> you not learned your lesson? Can I get a cone for this dog? Are you trying to eat this cat? Oh, my goodness. Now you want to eat my mask? Oh, no. Hey. <laughs> what is wrong with you? 
told you, you got a problem. You got to get the corner shame. You need to be a good girl. So you have literally gone down in history. Never in my, all my years have I had to put a cone of shame on the animal. I did no surgery on. Cone of shame, Hall of Fame. I feel good, man. I knew that was going to do a good job, man. So I, I wasn't even really worried. Dr. Hodges was like, he's the best. I think me and her probably going to get some to eat because I ain't had time to eat yet either. So we probably get some to eat. I get us some, like, some snacks or something. I know she might be hungry a little bit. So you know, took the socks out of her. <laughs> They sing real good, don't they? Hey, how you feeling, Chance? Dr. Hodges evaluates Chance's chances following the dog's risky surgery. All right, come on. Polly, what you got going? What you got? Can we take an x-ray on Chance Long? Mm hmm It's been about three days since Chance's surgery, and so I'm definitely happy to see he's bright and alert, but I really want to take an x-ray to see if the diaphragm is holding and see if the lung has inflated. Shooting. What you think, Doc? The collapse lung on the left side is doing very well. And that diaphragm is definitely holding. Chance pulled through, so Chance is going home. It's a lucky dog. He is indeed. It's very satisfying as a veterinarian when you can take a case that has some really, really impossible odds stacked against us in, you know? And you win. So the pet wins, the owner wins, so it's just a win, win, win all the way. What you think, Chance? Yeah, Chance with the Prince. The prognosis for Chance is really, really good. He's breathing better. He's eating. He's going to the bathroom. So I'm super happy to be able to send Chance home with his family because they really miss him. Look who's going home. Hey! 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 Hello, boy. See, the bruising is better. Yeah, if it was red, all the yes, man. there. I mean, we're breathing much better. We're wagging our tail. Talk about a miracle. <laughs> yes, sir. Wacky, back, yeah. Wagging his tail. He made it through. He made it through. This is why I do it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I sometimes long nights, and this makes it all worth it. You know Thank you, that, bro. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we came here to get Chance a chance to make it, and Look at that, we're, we're on our way home now, so I'm, I'm ecstatic. I just want to personally thank Dr. Hodges for really giving Chance a chance and then giving us the one that we love back to us. I'm glad to be going home not empty-handed. Yes, ma'am, I, I wasn't going to give up. I'm That's... so happy. You ready to go? Let's go. It's a miracle. The docs take a well-earned break from Critter Fixer to throw a mixer for their staff. Look at that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> this week is Vet Tech Appreciation Week, and this is the time where you just let them know that we really appreciate everything they've done. Now, you got long arms. <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy. We brought them here. We want them to have fun away from the clinic. Anytime we have an opportunity that we can give back to our employees, we're going to jump at that chance. It's just good to have them out and just having a good time. Oh, yeah. you got it. Nope. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, without our techs, we wouldn't be a critical. Their job is definitely not easy. <laughs> Every day is just a wholesome and bust. Everybody running around. Administering the medication, pulling the blood, running the tests, all done by technician. They really need accolades 52 weeks a year. You know those oxygen cages we have a critical? I need one. We had dreams of being successful veterinarians, but that would not be possible if it was not for you guys. We really do appreciate you. Can we got everybody a special gift? Oh, come on, Andrea. We're gonna fix a special <laughs> hug to we had to find something to do with them. Thanksgiving is coming soon. Nobody at Critifix will have dry turkey for this Thanksgiving. <laughs> You're seeing everybody having fun and not in the clinic and not thinking so much or stressed on a case. That's what it's all about. It's always fun. Happy Tax Day to and the turkey baster. <laughs> Happy Tax Day to you. All right.